All right, so it's now 12.05. Uh, let's begin the webinar. You have uh, dialed into a webinar called From Sawdust to Sustainable Future, Biocomposite's Role in Plastic Disruption. A very warm welcome to everybody sitting behind the screen. It's a pleasure to host this meeting. Uh, it's going to be a 30-minute webinar. Um, we will have a chat forum open, so you can write any questions that you would like. We will take them in the Q&A session later. Um, so it's going to be a 30-minute uh, webinar. Before we get started, let me just introduce the uh, host of the webinar. So, so the host of today's meeting is Fost Pharma. Frost Pharma is a fast growing uh, company with focus on pharmaceutical uh, pharmaceuticals in, and sustainable consumables, strong sustainability focused, it's unique based. And we start when we start identifying needs, we find the products and, and support our countries with them. You can see on, on this uh, picture that we're already located in Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Finland and Iceland. It's a country, it's a company based in Sweden. Um, today, I will be the moderator of, of this webinar myself. My name is Janne Jensen. A little bit about my own background and plastic. I used to be an ICU nurse, that is intensive care nurse. I worked in, as, a, as a nurse uh, 15 years ago. And when I worked, I started to use ventilation circuits to the patients that was designed in, in as reusable. So at the end of the day, I would wash them as a nurse and, and pack them, and then they were ready for the next patient. A year or two later, uh, plastics, sink disposable started to show up. So the last basically 10 years of my nursing uh, performance, I used single disposable plastic that I would throw out at the end of the day compared to me washing uh, those uh, ventilation circuits uh, when I started beginning. Anyway, so I have I have a little bit of about of an opinion about plastic in healthcare. So, but anyway, it's a pleasure to host this uh, to webinar. I will be a moderator for the next 25 minutes. We will start up by topic number one, enabling CO2 reductions with renewable materials, actionable strategies in short and long term perspective. It is a, an absolute pressure to introduce our first speaker of this webinar. Renato Kosic has commercial and operational experience from leading organization within renewable materials from both the forestry and bioplastic industry. He is currently heading the sales and business development of Wood Composite Sweden AB, a leading actor in the production of environmentally friendly wood compounds that is a climate smart alternative to fossil based plastic. An absolute pleasure to host you, Renato Kosic. The stage is now yours. Thank you very much, Yannick. And that was a, a nice intro. I'm really happy to, to be here to be able to share a little bit more information on the, the biocomposite material, which we are, which we have been working on for, for some years now. Uh, before jumping into that, a little bit of a, a history or an overview of, of how this, uh, this biocomposite business started. So back in 2014, this was still uh, owned by Stura Enso, uh, and that actually the development work uh, started up uh, from Stura Enso, where we were looking at, at how we can utilize the fiber knowledge that we have in the company uh, and mix this with with polymers in order to be able to, uh, to bring a more sustainable alternative to the, to the plastics market. Uh, the company is today owned by Sweden Timber Group since uh, half a year back approximately. Uh, and it's a large player here in the Nordics when it comes to, uh, to timber and, and classic saw products, but also on, on paper making. And the site that you see here on the, on the picture is, is where we operate. It's in the southern part of Sweden. Uh, and all of the wooden fibers also that we source and use in our material uh, is coming locally from, from within that uh, region. Uh, one thing also that, that I think is important to mention here right, uh, right in the beginning is the, the capacity which we have on a, on a yearly basis. Uh, it is today set up at a, at a capacity of 20,000 tons, uh, which 
if you look at the bioplastics market, this is quite a high capacity. There's not many other players that, that can reach uh, that volume of products. And that, of, of course, enables us then to be able to, to tackle and work also with, with big cases and big companies in order to make a, a real impact in the long run. Uh, finally, also here we have our, our full-scale polymer lab, so all of the material development, both, both for our raw materials internally, but also our, product, uh, our customer's product can be tested and, and verified, for example, to see what would happen in certain environments over time, technical and mechanical, physical properties. So, so all of this is something that, that we have in-house today, which is also a strength and, and provides flexibility. So the, the material itself then, uh, which we call biocomposite, it's, uh, it's a mixture of, uh, of plastics, so polymers and uh, Nordic softwood fibers. And if we look at the polymer side, we do have the option to either use a, a bio-based polymer matrix, uh, which means that it's, it's derived from based fats and, and used cooking oil. So it's a byproduct mainly from the food industry or you have the option to have a, a standard fossil based uh, plastic as a, as a polymer base. Obviously there, even if, if that alternative is, is somewhat cheaper, you will not get uh, quite the extensive CO2 savings as you would with, uh, with the bio-based version. And I will, I will showcase and explain this a little bit further in the, in the presentation later on. Uh, the amount of wood fibers which, which we can use in the material uh, depends really on the, on the design and, and the technical requirements that you have on the end product. So we, we always typically look at first, what, what, what is your, your requirement level? What kind of products are, are you producing today? And, and from that, we would uh, suggest a, a specific recipe. But we do have commercially available uh, about 20 recipes today, and they are ranging from 20 up to 55% of, uh, of wood fibers. So looking at the, the material recipes then that we have commercially available, uh, we have also chosen to divide them into three different material families. Uh, and the main difference, if, if you look at these three that you have on the slide here, if we start on the, the left-hand side, is that the pure materials, they are, and they have quite a low amount of, of additives and, and the, the, the wood fiber mix is quite straightforward and simple in the sense that, that we're using milled fibers and compounding that together with plastics. Uh, and that would be suitable for, for more simple applications looking at food items like uh, bowls, cutlery, and, and those type of, uh, of uh, products. Uh, but then if you're gonna move towards, if we were speaking about waste bins, hangers, even in the automotive industry or, or, um, or electronics, then you have a much higher, of course, uh, requirement on the, on the product in, in what it needs to sustain in both in terms of, of strength, flexibility, but also other other uh, parts like flammability and, and those aspects. Uh, and if you look at the prime material, this is something that we are quite unique uh, with on the market today, uh, especially being able to, to tackle those engineered plastics like, like ABS and PA6 uh, with a renewable sustainable material, but still be able to have, have that technical performance uh, of those. And this is shortly to give you a little bit of an illustration of, of the visual characteristic of the, uh, the products that are made with this material. So we will always have naturally this, uh, this caramel color, uh, but it can be dialed to, to any color that you want, uh, specifically for, for your products. Then what is not important, uh, possible, of course, is, is to get the, the transparent because you have the lignin in there. Um, then you can also have large or small fibers in, in each of our recipe. And that's, that's mainly a matter of the, the visual aspect. So with the larger fibers, which are a bit longer in, in length, they would be visible even if you would uh, dial the material uh, in the end product.
Now, if we look at the, the LCA performance uh, of our materials, uh, which is one of the, the main reasons, to, in all honesty, to, to why customers are choosing to, to switch to, to our solutions, uh, you can see here a, a chart where we have made a comparison against some of the conventional plastics on the market at the left hand side there you see ABS, PP and polystyrene. Now the, the dark green and light green uh, staples in this chart is, is our materials and I think we can take the pure L40 and echo L40 here as an example. So these two materials are very similar or even identical when it comes to, to mechanical properties. Uh, but the difference is in the pure L40, so the dark green, there you have a, a fossil-based PP, while in the eco version, you have a bio-based PP. So the, the CO2 is, uh, savings is much more extensive, of course, with a bio-based PP, because with the combination of that and the wood fibers, the, the material will actually capture the carbon from the atmosphere until, of course, it is, uh, it is released or, or burned at the end of its uh, life. And this can mention also, this is a cradle to gate scenario. And if needed to, to conduct full, uh, full party LCAs, where we also take into account the, the end product, then that is, is possible to do as well. Now, apart from, from the, uh, let's say the LCA performance, there are some other, uh, a lot of issues on the, in the plastics market that, that, are, that is driving this change and, and reasons to why we are seeing uh, increased uh, volumes on the, on the bio-based polymer side. Uh, one of them, of course, is the, is the low global recycling rate uh, of plastics. You have today about 430 million metric tons that's being produced globally all over the world. Uh, and over 60% of that actually ends up uh, in landfill or, or as some, some type of waste, uh, which is a, a huge, huge problem, of course. Now, it's not that strange also that the, the recycling infrastructure or the plastic industry uh, hasn't come further with the, with the recycling or with, with their bio-based solutions than, than, than they have today. Because if you look at the chart, it, it's quite a young industry still. Uh, the the full-scale production were, was ramped up in 76. So a lot of these, uh, these issues that we are seeing boiling today and are coming up to the surface uh, will drive the changes even, even faster, we think, in the, in the coming years here. So why is then wood compounds or, or biocomposite a, a good fit for this? Well, uh, if we look at the, the, the problems to which I just discussed a little bit about, you, we do see also that there's a lot of directives and legislation changes coming into place in, in this area. Uh, at the same time, a lot of them, you know, has end goals or even starting lines in 2035, some of them even 2045. Uh, and this is really, really time. If you, if you look at the crisis we're going through right now, it's time that we don't have. So our material is a really good fit to, to make an impact already today. Uh, it can be used as a drop-in solution and you can switch your current fossil-based plastics to a, to a renewable one and make a real impact right away. Um, apart from that, technically also uh, the performance on the material, you, you do not have to give up uh, a lot in order to, to gain on the, the CO2 emission sides. So we have a really good fit when it comes to, to mechanical and physical properties comparing to, to the conventional plastics that, that we see on the market today. Uh, then obviously microplastics is as well a big, uh, big issue in the society today. Uh, and even if we do utilize, uh, let's say a, a material with 50% bioplastic and 50% wood fibers, you still have plastic in there that, that would get incinerated, but it's 50% less. Um, so uh, the, the, the microplastics also in the environment is a thing that, that's being tackled with by replacing the wood fiber content uh, from the plastics then. And here is uh, uh, some uh, pictures to, to illustrate some of the products which, uh, which our customers are, are producing today. 
So you can see that just here, it, it's quite a wide range of, of different products. So the material is, is also versatile in, in that sense as well. And then finally, I will not spend too much time here, but uh, we do have all the certifications in place for our customer base today. And if, if there is anything specific that's, that's missing or we need to look at, we, we would obviously be, be open to do that also together with, uh, with our new customers. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks a lot. Renato, some very, very interesting uh, pointers that you made there. Um, I see that we already now have some questions in the in the chat uh, for the Q&A session. So, so let, let's stay with those questions or we will get back to them in the QRSA session. If we do not manage to get, you know, all the questions answered, we will we will do a document and we will we will send that document out as, as answers to all your great questions. Um, what we also will do is that we will record this um, webinar, so we will have the possibility to send out the webinar in recording afterwards. Anyway, uh, thank you for that, Renato. So let me go to topic number two on our webinar. How can biocomposite replace fossil-based plastic in healthcare? A really, really interesting topic. And it's a pleasure to have our speaker number two lined up. Henrik Alfredson is responsible for developing sustainable solutions for the healthcare at First Pharma AB. Experience from develop, developing dosing assets in bioplastic and now the first risk waste container in the world based on biocomposite material. A pleasure to have you with us, Henrik. The stage is now yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Renato, for a very interesting introduction and uh, overall presentation um, uh, of, the, uh, of the material we use. So what you see in front of you, my name is Henrik Alfredsson, so I've been working closely with Renato and his uh, development team. Uh, so over the last two, two and a half years, we've been able to... Uh, uh, create these hazardous waste containers, as you see on the slide in front of you. Um, it's been a, a lot of testing, uh, and we've been able to patent a number of, of um, parts in the development uh, over the years. Um, so these are the first uh, waste containers that are certified in the world based on biocomposite. So we have now the full range uh, from half a liter up to 50 liter. Uh, that are tested and proven um, using the material that Renato presented. So it's a great collaboration and uh, also a great product for the climate. So overall, we've proven with a full LCA, uh, not only cradle to gate, but cradle to grave, that we reduce the CO2 emissions by uh, almost two thirds. So that's what it says. So, why focusing on a waste container? We've been working towards the healthcare for uh, and the lab world uh, internationally uh, for many, many years. And when it comes to waste containers, these are one of the top three um, products that uh, creates a lot of uh, CO2 pollution. So only in the Nordics, we burn, combust over 10 million bins every year. So after uh, uh, aprons and gloves, this is one of the biggest uh, CO2 producers in healthcare overall. Uh, so looking at, if you put it in a graph, just to visualize everyone talking about single use plastic, but you, if you look at the normal hospital or healthcare overall, uh, gloves is number one, aprons number two, and then these bins are the number three. And 100% goes into the oven are combusted. So now there are available solutions. You can actually use uh, wood safe to uh, cut down the CO2. There are solutions available to recycle the aprons and there are projects how to use the gloves in a much smarter way. Um, so actually there is a potential solutions to cut down the CO2 by 50% just focusing on these top three products. So 
Back to WoodSafe uh, and the products. Today, a majority of the usage of the bins, they are produced in Southern Europe. They're based on fossil oil. Even if they are recycled, it's still oil. Plastic is great if you circulate it. But when it comes to a product like waste containers, they are all going into uh, to the oven. Uh, so then fossil, we, need, we don't want to pump in new oil into the system. We want to keep the oil we have and recycle the plastic. But if we can use uh, renewable material for the waste bin, it's much, much better for everyone. So on the left side, that's the reality today uh, in many cases. But the great thing here with, with uh, the biocomposite uh, and, and wood safe is that they are produced on residual waste. This is sawdust that can't be used uh, for anything else. Uh, we're using sw uh, Swedish uh, green energy, which is one of the greenest in Europe, to mold them. And in the end, it actually cut overall cradle to, to grave, cuts down the CO2 emissions by 66%. So don't burn plastic, not even recycled plastic. Keep it recycled. And we have done, as I mentioned, a full LCA. Uh, and this graph to the left shows for every kilo of fossil-based plastic, it produces uh, 5.7 kilos of CO2. And if you instead change this yellow bin to a brown bin, you can see on the, the right graph uh, that one kilo biocomposite only produce uh, 1.94 kilos of CO2. So that's minus 66%. And even if you have 40% recycled plastic, it's still just a smaller part of the reduc reduction. So it comes down to, and this is split down in the four sections. So production of the material, production of the product, transport of the product, and in the end, end of life incineration. And the, the, the LCA is, is produced by, uh, according to all international standards. Um, and you can actually calculate very, very easy down on each kilo, how much you save. So if you would go to woodsafe.green, we have a full uh, climate calculator. You just enter the, the number of bins you're using today, and it will calculate your savings if you would change to WoodSafe instead. And this will also be integrated into the CSRD reporting. So in a very short time, we will, on the homepage, you will be able to create a report that you can include in your CSRD work to do this uh, EU taxation reporting, which is mandatory for, for larger companies from now on. So please go to woodsafe.green and you will find the climate calculator. So in the end, a very easy, great material and a very smart and easy solution to cut down CO2 directly from day one. So if you would change just from the yellow bin to a brown bin using biocomposite instead of continuing burning plastic, um, we believe that this is probably the easiest climate action in the world. So thank you very much for listening. And please uh, visit woodsafe.green for more information and contact as well. Thank you, Henrik, for that very, very nice presentation with some very nice insights. I can see that we already now have a lot of questions for the Q&A session. So, so let's jump into that and get straight ahead to, to all, all those questions. Uh, let's take a, a question here from, from one of our participants. You said brown, Henrik. Uh, can it be yellow? Yes, it could be colored in any color. In the Nordics, they have preferred to keep the, the, the brownish color, which is the natural material. But for like in the UK market and other markets, we could uh, preferably color the lid in any color, actually. Yellow, uh, blue, green, whatever. Thank you for that. Another question, and I think I will address this to you, uh, Renato. Uh, do you cut down trees to get the raw materials? Uh, good question. Uh, we, we do not cut down trees directly to, to get our raw materials. Obviously, in Sweden Timber Group, we are utilizing trees in the different 
business areas that we have but uh, what goes into our material is actually a, a byproduct from sawmills so those are typically fibers that would get incinerated uh, but here still we have an offset to to use them in a in a product instead so the answer is no we do not cut trees directly to use in this material all right thank you for that Another question from, from one of our uh, audience here is, uh, are the waste bins approved for usage in S1, S2 labs? I think I will give this to you, uh, Henrik. Uh, an interesting question. Can you answer that, please? The product is, uh, I don't know the specific for the, for the question. I will come back to that. But it is used in, in the large labs, uh, big pharma companies, uh, uh, even international ones in, in, uh, in, in, in all the labs in the production today. But let me get back to the specific question. All right, as stated, as stated earlier, we will take the questions and, and put them into a document with our answers and, and also post that uh, together with this webinar and the recording. But thank you for that uh, question. I think I will give this to you, Renato. Is the term biocomposite defined in any way? Or can everyone use that term when they mix a bio-based material? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's quite a general term. I would say many are today using biocomposites as a term for a plastic product where you have two different types of material that you are mixing. Uh, at the time when, when this was started up in Stura so it was decided that biocomposites is a good name and, and that we have, we have proceeded with. But if, if you look at the actual branding of, of the product, we do also have brand names like DuraSense in there, which is, uh, which is uh, more connected to us specifically then. Uh, but biocomposite is a general term, yes. Thank you for that. Another question here from our from our audience: What are the limitations with using biocomposite flexibility in material and and more? I think that, that will also go to you, Renato. Yeah, sure. So yeah, obviously, since 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 you are mixing it it with wood fibers, there are some limitations. I would say that the the main one is is the brittleness that you get. The, the more wood fibers you have, the the more brittle it will it will it will tend to be. And that means that that very thin walled product can be can be hard to produce with this material. Then you will have to go down in in uh, in fiber content. Uh, that and then obviously also there's there's it's not a possibility to get a transparent color on on this material, uh, which can be in some in some certain sector uh, an important aspect. All right, thank you for that. A funny question here, but I can relate. Uh, my dad used to construct uh, wooden furniture, uh, and we have a, a listener now that's apparently have some experience with our our uh, the wood safe product. Says here they smell. <laughs> Is that safe? And I think I think our spectator means that they smell of wood because you make it from sawdust, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. I mean, you 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 get the smell because of in the compounding process or, or when you are producing your end product, you get quite high temperature. So you're burning lignin and that's what you what you feel in the air. So it's almost like to me, it smells like a bakery. It's a bit sweet. Uh, but how you the best way to tackle that is, of course, to 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 follow the processing instructions. So the temperature is, is sensitive Too high temperatures will give you more more smell that that that's harder to get rid of uh, but then usually the smell is is as strong as after production and that will kind of wear off after you have uh, you have had it at your stock or, or wherever you you're keeping the the product all right thank you for that and then i have a question here and i think i think that will go to you henrik uh, by using the calculator on the website is there a generate is that is there a generate a certificate that the customer can show on their home page. Does yeah, it generate I mean, a certificate? Yeah, the, there is uh, all the, the data behind the calculator is, is uh, documented based on the LCA. So that's uh, and also the CSR reporting is it's, uh, checked and approved by, by experts. And uh, so it's all based on docu the full documented LCA. So you will get the report on exactly your data for your hospital, your lab, or your pharma company uh, uh, on, on the data. So that will be a report that is based on a certified and documented three-part um, report. 
Okay, thank you for that, Mike. So as I said earlier, we still have a lot of questions. I think that the timing here is important. So so let's let's as promised uh, do the document where we take all your great questions and again thank you for all your great questions and and put them down into our document with our answers. Um, on behalf of of everybody sitting behind the the desk here, I I want to say thank you from 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 our hearts at Fast Pharma. A pleasure to to see so many participants here. So a pleasure and, and a deep thank you for participating. I also want to say a deep thank you to you, Renato, for, for being here with us today. And, and a, a great thank you, of course, also to you, Henrik, for, for participating. It is now 12.35, and we promised to wrap up at 12.35. So again, thank you for, for dialing into this webinar. It's been a pleasure hosting it, uh, and uh, I wish you all a great day. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you very much.